Hey everyone, my name is Ellie and I'm working with Children with Cancer UK to deliver you a few videos about what being a cancer patient is really like. So I was diagnosed with cancer four years ago now and fortunately I'm in remission now. So um, I've been through it and now I want to inform you guys and kind of give you a bit of advice about what to expect. Um, so today's video is actually about the cancer diagnosis. So when I actually think back to my cancer diagnosis, all the emotions and how scared I was does run back to me because it is such a horrible time and even if you didn't know what the word cancer meant before you were diagnosed, it's still very scary because you know, you're really ill and the doctors are really concerned about you. But in today's video, um, I'm going to be sharing with you about my cancer diagnosis. And this video was actually filmed, um, I think about five months after I was diagnosed. So I have a bald head, feeding tube, so I look very different, so don't be alarmed. Um, but yeah, I really hope um, that this video helps you um, because I know how when you're diagnosed with cancer, it can feel so isolating because you feel like you're the only one. No one, no one else at school has cancer, so it can feel really, really scary. But I hope this video kind of helps you and informs you about what to expect and what it's like, or even, you know, just to watch someone else who's been through it can be really nice. Um, but I'm gonna be giving you my top tips for how to cope with your cancer diagnosis at the end of this video. So make sure to stay tuned for that. So the first sign I had that something was wrong was probably a year before I was diagnosed. So probably it, sometime in 2014, probably after the summer holidays in 2014. And I got these things called lymph nodes. I just didn't really know what they were. I kind of don't even really remember them coming up. I just remember seeing them and I was like, were they there before? And so that was the first signs. And the second thing I had was in, I'd say, I'd say about March of 2015, I got this little like lump in my left butt cheek and I didn't really think anything of it, I just thought it was like a muscle or something and so I kind of didn't really think anything of it but by the summer holidays of 2015 it got so so big, it nearly covered the whole of my bum cheek and it was really uncomfortable to sit on as well the third sign I had was I used to be really sporty, I used to do a lot of running, my left thigh started just really really hurting when I walked for a long time or when I ran and stuff it would just ache like really really ache so I went to the doctors about that and they said it was probably a deep tissue tear so I rested it for six weeks and after six weeks I went back to playing football and it started hurting again and in about May of 2015, um, just a few months after having the lump, I started getting quite bad constipation, like, it wasn't too bad at the start, but in the summer holidays, I spent most of the summer holidays constipated, and it was just horrendous, I, it was just, it just made me feel quite, not depressed, but quite sad, I was just wondering what the hell is wrong with me, so I decided to start eating all bran, I um, took laxatives, but nothing really worked, and that's when I started getting really worried, and I kept looking up on Google what I thought it could be, thought the um, lump could be, and something said hemorrhoids, um, but it was too big to be a hemorrhoid, but then the thing that I thought it was was an abs for was a per perineal abscess. I don't know how to pronounce it. Um, and so that's why I went to my mum and we went to the doctors. He checked it out. He thought it was an abscess too. He gave me I think about ten days worth of antibiotics, and um, that 
just didn't work it was getting bigger then we went back to the doctor and we met an amazing doctor called dr watson she's the best doctor ever she took one look at my lump and said i'm going to send you straight up to the hospital we're going to give you an abscess removal operation so it comes to 7 p.m and i'm brought down to the operation theater then i got out of the operation theater and i didn't remember this but apparently i was in quite a lot of pain with um, my wound but that was all okay this doctor surgeon guy came in and he said to us we opened up the um w the abscess and it didn't look like a normal abscess there was no pus so just abnormal tissue and I didn't really think anything of this I just thought oh they'll be able to give me some tablets and it'll go down um, and he went away and then throughout that week I had just random little tests like I had a million and one blood tests I had a CT scan and they didn't tell us why that was my siblings and my friends were over and my friend's mum and they, one of the doctors called out my parents or my mum at first um, to come and talk with her and she was taking a really long time so they came back in they looked a bit like they just didn't look normal and oh god this is like giving me butterflies thinking about this so basically I was laying on my bed and my mum comes over to me saying like she starts like tearing up and I'm just when I get a bit worried like my heart starts racing and she's like you don't want to know you don't want to know and I'm like and I'm like trying to hold in the tears and I scream at her tell me tell me and then she says you've got they think that you've got cancer and she starts crying I said that's starts crying I start crying while screaming 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 um I think the screaming just helped me stop thinking about it and I just felt just so scared like am I gonna die kind of thing um because obviously cancer that I had a great granddad that died of cancer and it just scared the life out of me then the nurse tells me you're gonna have you're gonna be going to Nottingham tomorrow in the ambulance and that really really scared me because I'd never been to Nottingham before I knew it was really far away from my home I'm gonna be there for the foreseeable just so far away from my house so we arrive at the Queen's Medical Centre in Nottingham and the first thing I saw was Teen Can Teenage Cancer Trust and that kind of scared me because I thought oh my goodness this is like for real a cancer ward I'm on a cancer ward and the first person I see on the cancer ward is one of my pretty good friends now called Heather and I just see a girl with bald head lying like sleeping um on the bed but I thought she was like knocked out from the chemo or something so that really scared me but then after they left the girl Heather was doing school work and stuff I was like she can she's ill and she if she's ill and she can do school work i can do school work so i did some school work um what was it and i just kind of settled in i watched some tv oh my feeling bad so between the tuesday and the thursday i had quite a few tests i don't know the exact order but i'm gonna go with what i think so on the tuesday i'm pretty sure i had an mri scan and that was actually that was my first MRI scan. That was actually quite nice because I was quite out of it that time, quite poorly. So it was quite relaxing. Don't even ask. A bit weird, but I found it quite relaxing. Um, I think I may have also had a kidney function test that day, and on and that, and then I had on the Wednesday. I think I had a bone scan, and. I think I may have had my port fitted that day. I'm not sure. It's all a bit of a blur. I may have had my port fitted on Tuesday. I've no clue. I can't remember. <laughs> it seems so long ago. Um, so one of the days I had a bone scan. Then I had an operation for my port and a biopsy. And I think that was it. And then the Friday comes 
and my consultant brings takes aside my parents and that made me quite nervous and scared because last time a doctor told like took away my parents that really bad news so I didn't want it to be even worse news. But they came back and basically said that I had alveolar rhabdomyosarcoma and they basically said they was gonna start me on chemotherapy that day and also that it was in the top of my left thigh which explains the leg aching um, it was in all of my bone marrow it was in my lymph nodes explains all the lymph nodes were up it was in all of my pelvic area which explains why I was getting constipation and why my kidney tubes were getting pinched so I started having trouble weeing and it was in the whole of my left bum, bum cheek which explains why I got the lump <laughs> yeah so I had it in quite a few places um, but they, they were pretty certain that I would be able they'd be able to treat it which was really reassuring so they started me off in chemo that day now for my advice about coping with your cancer diagnosis. So my number one tip is to have acceptance. So when you're diagnosed with cancer, you often feel angry, resentful, sad, scared, and that's justified, you know, it's understandable to feel those things, but there's only so long that you can feel angry because it will, continue to eat you up and make you feel even worse. But if you have acceptance and kind of, yeah, just basically accept the fact that cancer has happened, then it will help you to move forward. You can think, yep, yeah, cancer's happened, but I'm going to make the most of it and strive forward and keep positive. So that's my most important piece of advice um, because if you feel angry and resentful, then it will just make you feel even worse. So my top motto is stay strong and keep positive. So I think this is really important for anybody who is fighting cancer um, because without strength and positivity, everything would feel so tough. Whereas if you have strength and positivity, then that gives you the hope and fiery determination to strive forward and keep doing those chemotherapy treatments and keep going to the radiotherapy sessions you know, it is really tough, so you have to have something to fight for and something that will get you through all of this horrible treatment. My last piece of advice is to have a good support network. This is so important if you're going through cancer because those people will be there with you throughout and they will help you get through the treatments and deal with the emotions that you're feeling. So make sure, you know, even to just have visitors come to the hospital, that helped me so much because it was a distraction where I could think of something other than cancer and those people just have so much love for you that it's really nice when they come uh, by to visit the hospital because, um, you know, being in a hospital room all day is not very fun. So having someone that you love and cherish by your side is really nice. Thank you so much everybody for watching. I really hope this video helped you. To watch more of my videos then definitely go check out my YouTube channel called Team Ellie. I really hope those videos help you too. So I'll see you in the next video.